Okay, so we're using a universal now on this. I've always just called it a wobbler. And the mechanics guys have all their Allen keys and all their sockets with one of these built in. But I ain't got that amount of tools. So I just have one of these little 3 8 inch wobbler attachments that you can fit on anything. All right, so I just had that loose. It can't be that tight. There, she's coming now. And then, if she's loose, I should be able to pull that out. Okay, so if you saw what I did there, just taking this jack shaft assembly out so that I can pull that out. And then we're pretty much game on to be able to uh, take the hub or the clutch hub off, pull the bolts around it. We've got a bolt here, two bolts here that hold the starter solenoid. We got a couple feed through bolts from the other side that hold the starter. So we got to get the solenoid and the starter off, the clutch hub off, and then we got this inner primary out and ready to uh, ship it off if the gentleman still wants it. In fact, I will. Where's that part I just took out? I'm going to put that shaft and that plug in there. Because if his inner primary is broken or busted, he probably doesn't have those two parts. So versus having him come back to me in a week after shipping and saying, hey, any chance you got these two parts? I'll just ship them out with the, the primary. And of course, I can't get the angle of the dangle where I want it. All right, so it's going to fight me. We're going to hold off on that. So don't let me forget that. Not the end of the world. Okay, so I'll be darned if I can find my clutch hub puller. Let me find the socket for that. And most of you guys that do know, you know that your transmission hub nut, which is this center nut, is left hand thread so the old righty tighty lefty loosey it don't work there so you have to turn it to the right to loosen it so it's not an inch and a quarter inch and an eighth is that the one that's the one okay and then we got to put this on tidying you got to do it tight. This righty tighty is actually loose on these. Okay. All right. So I don't have the clutch hub puller, which, trust me, I'm going to invest in one, as many of these as I fight with. And if you're prying on this, you have a tendency of either bending that plate or bending the forks. This thing's so beat up, it's probably going to go in the trash anyway. So I'm not too concerned about it. So we're going to see with just a little bit of little prying here and there if we can get this guy off. That's the way I've always done it. It's just kind of worked in a circle. But the older these are, sometimes the harder they are. So that little washer, if I can get a hold of it, yeah, I'll get it off. You can see it's got a tab that you can bend over. Those are another safety measure. I was going to say that Harley did, but it's not really Harley. It's everybody did that on machine stuff. That tab keeps everything from bending over. Might have to get a, something with a little more girth in behind here is she not coming yet let me grab a needle nose i want to get that washer out of the way oh wait he almost had it now nah, she's gonna fight me let me get a needle nose we're gonna spray some coil coil oil down in there so there's several different penetrating oils on the market and I don't know who does what, but I kind of like the PB Blaster. I use that for stubborn stuff and 
I've had the most luck with it. There is the Croil, K-R-O-I-L. I've heard really good things about that too. And we're gonna put a little back here. See it dripping out. That means it's getting in there. All right, what did I do with these needle nose? Yeah, so that's buggered up too. See that little tongue right there? I'm gonna show you here. It's bent completely over. There, you can kind of see it at an angle. That's supposed to be 90 degrees and it's supposed to reference itself in the groove in that shaft. Um, see the little hole back up inside there where the drift key is? So that's supposed to go in there into that drift key hole to keep anything from spinning. And then these things get bent over the edge of your nut, wherever I put the nut. So when your nut goes on there, these things, you bend them over the top and that keeps that from backing out. It's also right hand or left hand thread because as that's spinning, it's constantly trying to tighten the nut, not loosen it, you know, because, uh, you know, this thing's spinning at five, six, seven thousand RPM. So that was not installed correctly. Uh, there's a lot of not correct here, but that's neither here nor there. I like to tell people when I find stuff just because I had to be taught a bunch of this stuff. So I'm just trying to shock that hub a little bit. And like I said, I'm only doing this because when we get this off, this whole thing is going right in the trash. I've got eight of these at least laying around in decent shape. This one's just beat, beat, beat. See if that coil or that PB blaster is doing anything yet. Typically you tap on these a few times and about the fourth or fifth time you do it, it just pops out of there. Boy, this one's not. So we're going to do a little more PB blaster down in here. So see that little square at the end of the straw? Right inside there's a drift key, and that drift key aligns with the, sh the, the same alternating groove in the transmission sprocket. So what we're going to do is we're going to pour a little oil on that. We can go to the other side of the bike and figure out what's holding our stator and our starter and get those off. And then we'll probably get these bolts off. We're just kind of letting this soak. We don't need to mean muscle it and break anything. So on this side, what do we need over here? It looks like 7 sixteenths twice. So we're going to come and find that 7 sixteenths. And we're going to find a longer extension and we're going to bring our Costco bucket of nuts. I save these, they make great bolt stuff. I just fill them up until I fill them up with each bike and I usually label them until I go through and clean them out. So I have, anytime I tear a bike down, I keep all the bolts on them on that bike in one of these or some sort of container until I'm completely done. And that way, if I need whatever, a shock bolt or any of that type of stuff, I've got drawers and drawers full of a lot of that stuff. So that's just a pretty cover, which is gonna lead me to that, which is gonna lead me to that. So let's start up here, see if I can get in between here, over to that bolt. So this is all different to me. I'm used to the stator being on the front of the primary cover, like the older shovels. Oops. Oh, so I dropped the bolt and the socket. So it has this little bracket that went over the stator and it's helping hold it on, but it's threaded here. So I can't help but think there was some sort of attachment there. And it's been a while since I took the pipes off. It might've been exhaust related, I'm not sure. Okay, so if we're going down in there, is that a seven? I think that's a half, I know that's a half. That's a seven, but I can't get to it. So let me grab a 
couple tools. Parts is parts. We just keep tearing parts off. So all this bracketry is all pretty much factory original. Kind of cool. Be nice if I can get this engine and transmission and stuff out of here and stockpile it wherever and make myself a little more room. <sighs> Be really nice if one of you guys watching this video said, man, I need that engine and transmission. And I could send it to you and make a couple bucks and get it out of my way. What is it? If wishes were fishes, we'd all catch a big one. Okay, yeah, for sale on this side, we have the actual oil bag, um, which is kind of type specific. We've got the shocks. We've got the strut covers. I've got a couple of these uh, luggage racks. That rear fender with the stock brake light, the bumper, the saddlebag guards, battery box. I mean, any of that stuff. If you're building one of these bikes, there ain't no place to get that. In fact, most of these parts for this bike, you can't even get on JP Cycles or V-Twin. These are A lot of these are really hard to find parts. Wow. Okay, so back on this side. I came around to get the last starter bolt because I figured it came from this side. Well, guess what? It don't. In fact, it was over here missing completely. So the starter only had one bolt on it. This thing had a lot more stuff needed to it than I was aware of. So learning curve, 35 years of doing this, and I learn every time I pick up a wrench. It's funny, some of the comments I get from guys are kind of being pricks or keyboard warriors. And man, and nobody knows anything about all of these bikes. We're all working on it. I was dealing with the Myron Wild Turkey out in Missouri. He's a wizard. He's been doing this forever. And even he's still on a learning curve, you know? You quit if you quit learning, you die. So if you have questions, great, give them to me. If I don't know the answer, I'll tell you straight up what I do and don't know and hopefully find you the right answers because we're all just trying to keep these bikes alive. Okay, so solenoids off, starters off. And like I said, there was only one bolt holding the starter on, which is kind of scary. So we're going to get a little bigger uh, convincer for that hub to see if we can get that to break free. And then it's about ready to pull that off. Let's see. Now, let me get a little, little more girth to the pry bar here. Hold on a sec. Okay, kind of backwards here, but we'll try it. She is in there. All right, well, don't know which direction to go with this. I don't want to crack this case. The guy needs the case. Might have to hold off and buy a clutch tool. I've also heard of building one out of a, not sure how you do it. I have to do some research, but a clutch hub tool goes around here and probably centers in the middle like a gear puller. 